into gender inequalities and security and we're going to explore how gender inequalities intersect with security concerns owing to climate change. Um, in what specific ways do gender inequalities intersect with security risk uh, induced by climate change and how can gender respons responsive policies and practices be used to strengthen efforts on for peace building within uh, the context of environmental challenges? And for the policies to be adopted, I will say to implement the policies that promote gender equality. I feel we already have the gender policy. We have uh, the drafted peace policy that's ongoing right now. How about we have the disaster risk management policy that also was launched, but do we implement them is the question. So I think yeah, implementing those policies and also develop climate change adaptation and mitigation strategies that will help these women and equip them with the knowledge they need when it comes to climate change. There are a lot of gender responsive policies that are in place. Uh, it's either people choose to ignore or a lot of our women are not aware about the basics. For instance, they are not aware that the government passed a two-third gender rule um, that is supposed to enhance the gender responsiveness of our constitution. Uh, these are some of the things that have been put in place just because um, um, just because it, it, it looks good on the outside. It looks good to the international donors. It looks good to the outside community that Kenya has a gender responsive uh, you know, constitution and uh, policies that have been put in place. But how are we as a community or how are we as a county government um, localizing these um, agreements, the international agreements, to be able to support the rural woman uh, who is in areas that she cannot access um, electricity, she cannot access water, she cannot access uh, agricultural produce. Some of these areas in Garissa, it's very sad because you see um, uh, like Border Border is the one that takes um, local, they actually don't take it, they sell to the local um, women there because the men had already migrated with the animals. So this lady is left with nothing. She has uh, no one to turn to. And uh, the ha only other way to access things is uh, going for very long kilometers. And I feel like that is a very big um, threat. And so some of the times they are uh, gotten into these uh, violent extremist groups to be able to be spies. But that is, the only, that is the only source of income she has. So if there was a way to diversify her uh, income, then it would be able to make her safe and also take care of her family. And these women and youth are coming up, that is bargain power. In the county level, uh, when, we are, when we are recruiting uh, the CECs, the chief officers, there is power bargain also. There is a two-third gender rule. Women are included in, uh, in the chief officers' recruitment in all the sectors. And you may even see in Garissa County, as uh, so far, we have five women who are uh, uh, it's called area chiefs in all the in, in, in Garissa County. There is that involvement. We also have women who are uh, women who who are fighting men in terms of leadership position. So I think we are coming up. And also to add on the same, uh, we I have encountered the county government and also the uh, national government. Uh, for instance, the Kenya National Climate Change. It has had quite a number of programs, even in the institution, where they are they are they are they are emphasizing on the empowerment of women, and uh, on climate change, and also the things to do with planting trees. And they specifically mention that these uh, opportunities are for women and also for the ladies, especially in the university. So it is a way that the government and the county government is empowering the women and making sure that they are included in decision making on matters regarding climate change. I think one of the main key things that uh, women do is, let's say, spread information very, very, very quickly. And that is one of the key things that women are acting as agents. For example, they hear there, there is going to be El Nino, for instance. You will find that if, they, if it's a woman who is responsible for spreading that message, and you'll find that even in most species, let's say the assistant chief, I have I've interacted with a couple of the chief and the assistant chiefs who are uh, women, and they really spread the information accurately and very efficiently. So yeah. 
kind. We mainly use natural resources that are available at the local, at the community level, at the home level, to grow uh, the plant, the plants and uh, uh, and uh, agriculture. But because they are not in the large scale uh, agriculture, they're not pretty much in in the business. So no one, are, no one are talking about it. Women are lacking in terms of education. If we will do at the grassroots level, if we mentor young girls, who are the most affected in terms of climate uh, change related issues, we will, it will be good for, for the young girls. We will teach them on how to, 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 to adapt to climate change, the resilience part, what they can offer as, as young girls. And also maybe to add on the platform, and also uh, one of the key things that I have seen is women stepping on their fellow women. And I think that is something that is finishing us because we are fighting each other. So I think one of the key things that I would love to say is, let women support each other. The way I'm seeing it happening here, let it happen, let it, let it happen to the county level, to the national level, and also let's motivate each other. And also for the women who are keep on writing research proposals for the climate change, keep on doing it. Keep on, uh, you know, submitting those research, even if they're not approved, keep on taking up the spaces with confidence and, you know, uh, with no time soon, you're going to be seen and to be... Another thing that uh, I feel like also putting us down, when it comes to budget making and like finances, at the household level, women are be like, oh, women are good uh, budget makers. You know, I can give her 30,000. She knows how to stretch till end month. But we don't see that reflecting when it comes to uh, budget making and financing when it comes to... It's, uh, big spaces where like there is value, there is opinion, there is articles. So. Um, thank you, thank you very much. We've come to the end of episode five um, and we've dwelt into issues surrounding climate change, gender equalities, the impact on peace and security within Gaisa County. And I'm really thankful for your insight, uh, Damon, uh, Jamila, Kothar and Joyce. Um, and for our listeners, we hope this really inspires you and it focused, uh, forces um, effective strategies and unlimited leads to more inclusive and secure community within the Garissa County. Stay tuned for other episodes to come. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>